gas training how for misters work and how to test my name is alan hart and in today's video i'm back at viva training academy and we've got roy and roy's going to go through for misters how to test them i've also put roy in the naughty corner today so that's a little bit of fun later on in the video uh, yeah so roy's going to go through for misters we to go through how to test them how to drop them on floor as well um and why you offer misters in boilers so yeah let's uh, go over to roy this video is for gas safe registered and trainee gas engineers under supervision please comply with the current regulations at the time hi guys it's roy fuber here at the viva uh, training academy over in halifax again and today we're going to have a look at uh, thermistors, talk about different types of thermistors, what thermistors are, what they do. We're going to go into the workshop and show you how to test the thermistor on a live boiler. Uh, I'm also playing with my new toy. I've got a new flute multimeter here and it's got an app on it which is actually linked onto my phone. So now when I'm doing uh, videos and we're looking at resistances, voltages, whatever I need for my multimeter, I don't need to keep screwing my neck around looking unprofessional. I can have a quick glance down at my phone and see what we're doing. So what I'm going to do is just push the record button on here. So it's recording what I'm doing. I've also got my K458 um, analyzer in. The reason for that is just to check the temperature because the misters are temperature sensors. So I just wanted to get myself a base temperature in here. And the temperature in here is about 21.7 degrees. It's nice and warm because I know um, Alan doesn't like it too cold when he comes in here. So, what's a thermistor? It's a temperature sensor. Now, different manufacturers will call them different things. I've heard them called temperature sensors, flow sensors, thermistors, NTC sensors. Well, NTC means negative temperature coefficient, and that's how these particular thermistors operate. What that means is, as the temperature rises, the resistance goes down. Um, so that's how that works. The higher the temperature on these particular ones, the lower the resistance. We did in our industry used to use PTCs, positive temperature um, coefficient thermistors, which basically as the temperature went up, the resistance went up. So they did that. So what I'm gonna do is just have a little look at these different thermistors. I've got all sorts of different ones in here. Um, I have a little brass one there. I can't even remember what that one come out. I think it's out of an old Worcester. It's a few years old. It's a brand new thermistor, but it's never been fitted. I've got a clip-on one there that's used on a Baxi system boiler. Uh, another clip-on one. I've got a dry pocket one out of a Ramea. Um, that's out of a Worcester. That's a floor thermistor. A little brass thermistor there, which... Um, Lots and lots of manufacturers have used that one. Bax has used it, Vicar has used it, lots and lots have used it. So all sorts of different thermistors in here. Now with a thermistor, what you will have is a base reading. And what we're gonna do throughout the video, we'll put charts up so you can, you can get a, an idea of what we're talking about. So the most common base reading is 10,000 ohms at 25 degrees. So a lot of the Mr. Manufacturers will use that. So what that means is if I measured the temperature and it was 25 degrees, I would get 10,000 ohms. Now this particular thermistor I know is a 10,000 ohm at 25 degrees. As we've already said, it's about 20.7 degrees in here. So I'm just gonna go across it. Now what I've done, when I take old wiring harnesses out or take old boilers out, I strip the harnesses out and I make myself little test pieces just so that it's easier to get in because some of these thermistors, like this particular one, the pins are quite close together. Getting your probes in off your multimeter can be quite awkward. If you've got a little test piece, you can just plop it in and then you've got a little choppy block on the end of it. And all I'm going to do is go across that terminal block there and just have a quick look. And the reading there, I'm getting 10.3637. It's still moving a little bit. So 10.42 on that one, uh, as I'm reading it now. So it's settling round. But if we said round about 10,500 ohms, cost the K means 1,000. So that's that one. 
So that's a 10,000 at 25 degrees. So it's not too far away. There is a tolerance on thermistors. Most manufacturers will say a 10%. So, so long as we're in that tolerance. So I've got another one on here, which is a 10,000. So this is a little um, thermistor that goes into a pocket. I think that came off a back boiler, actually, uh, an old Baxi Bermuda. So I'm going to test that one. And the reading I'm getting on there, that one's 12,120, uh, so 12.1K, so that's what I'm getting on that one. Um, so this little fella's out of a Worcester, quite common to a lot of you guys. I know Alan's fitted quite a few Worcesters in the past, so he's quite familiar with this one. Now this one, Worcester are quite specific on theirs. They give an actual figure. Now I've got to cheat, I've brought it down. 11,981 ohms at 25 degrees, which is quite specific. And on their chart, they've got all the figures. So if we are looking at them, we always refer to the charts that are in the manufacturer's instructions or on their websites, on, off their technical helplines. So I'm just gonna connect onto this one. So with it having a slightly different base reading, it's gonna have a slightly higher uh, reading at the temperature we're at, which again is 20.66 degrees. So this one's sitting there at 14.24K. So 14,240 ohms. So that tells me it's a good reading. So again, this one, this is out of a Ramea. It's also out of the uh, latest Baxi uh, range of heat only boilers. It sits in a dry pocket. I'll come back to that uh, uh, in a minute or two. So it just screws on there. And again, this is a 12,000 ohm at 25 degrees. So again, we're just gonna check that one. So there we're getting 14.3. So it's not much different to what the uh, the Worcester one was. So it's, it's within that tolerance of, of a 12,000 thermistor. Now this particular one, this one is actually a flu thermistor. So when we're looking at thermistors, we've got different uses for thermistors. Hot water sensor, flow sensor, return sensor, flu sensor. Anywhere where we need to measure an accurate temperature, a thermistor is used. So if we're thinking about the hot water thermistor, the temperature that that's going to come across, if we think about the cold water coming in, in winter it could be coming in as low as 5 degrees. We will ideally want it to get up to 60. We know it's probably not going to achieve that because most manufacturers talk about a 35 degree rise from cold. So if we're coming in at let's say 20 degrees in summer, we're only going to get that to maybe 55 degrees and that's going to be pretty warm. Typically in this country, we're looking at mainly the cold water somewhere around about 10 to, between 10 and 15 degrees. So with that, we're looking at 45, 50. Um, so that's the temperature range that we'd be looking at, somewhere between maybe five degrees up to 60, 70 degrees. On the central heating side, we don't want it going any lower than maybe five degrees. And a lot of boilers, modern boilers, they have frost protection, which if the thermistor on the flow pipe or the return pipe sensors a resistance reading equivalent to five degrees, it will trigger the boiler to come on on frost protection. Boiler maximum temperature we normally say for 80, so we're looking at somewhere between five and 80. So most manufacturers will use a thermistor which is between sort of zero degrees up to 100 degrees because it covers that band. They'll also use that one for the hot water. So you'll find that they'll be really typically the same sort of thermistor they're using for both hot water and heating or the same bandwidth. Now, when it comes to fluing, fluing's a different kettle of fish. Fluing can be quite high. So this particular thermistor, again, it's out of a Baxi or a Giannone style heat exchanger. Now, this one is designed that if the resistance reading gives the circuit board a temperature which is 150 degrees, it will basically flag an error code up because it doesn't want it to get too hot and damage that heat exchanger. That heat exchanger is from a condensing boiler, so really it shouldn't be getting much above 60, 65 degrees anyway. So this uses a higher resistance reading. We're looking on this one, it's a 20,000 ohm at 25 degrees. So I'm just gonna test this one for you so we can see what it's doing. So we're on there, and I've got a reading of 22.8K, 22, 22.86. It's just varying a little bit as the temperature changes. So that's just a little bit about them. So just to give you an idea of how quickly these things react, 
I've got another 10,000 one here. So I'm just going to stick my probes on there. And I'm also going to get hold of it. And you'll see how quickly it changes. So at the moment, we're getting a, just over 12.3K. So if I grab hold of it, as we can see now, my body heat is causing that temperature to go down. So obviously the resistance is going down. So we're getting down to 10.5, 10.4, 10.3. So it's coming down. So they act very, very quickly. So a way of testing the thermistor out in the field is actually, if it's in a dry pocket, take it out, get your multimeter across it and touch it, which is fine. If it's in a wet pocket, you don't really want to be taking it out because you've got to drain it. You can grab hold of the pipe where that thermistor is located, providing the boiler's not too hot. And typically we're going out to look at boilers because they're not functioning. So the flow and return pipes are quite cool. So we can look at that. Thermistors can fail. They can go open circuit, as we've talked about in the past, which means there's no connection across there. So the circuit board doesn't pick a reading up and you'll usually get an error code coming up. The other one is they can go to a too low a resistance where they're starting to get what's called a short circuit on there. And if the resistance is too low, if it's outside the tolerance band that the manufacturers are looking for, again, it's going to flag an error code up. So then it's going to point you in the direction of that thermistor. The other one that they can do, and I talked about it on a previous video, is what we call drifting, where we're getting a reading, but it's not the accurate reading. It's not within the 10 to 20% that most manufacturers say that their thermistors are. So that's how we can test them on a bench, and we can also pop a little uh, test piece in there and check them. Uh, out in the field, it's slightly different. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna go into the workshop down here at Viva, and I'm going to show you how to test one on a live boiler. I'm really sorry guys, I've been in the naughty corner. Alan put me in the naughty corner. We've just reviewed to edit the video and what he realised I'd done, I'd made a mistake. What I said was the temperature going up and what I sort of said is the temperature goes down. On a thermistor, resistance goes up, temperature down. My body heat was taking the temperature up so the resistance was coming down. So I apologise. I've been in the naughty corner, so we're gonna crack on. So we've got a Green Star system boiler here. We've had it on all morning. It's been warm in the classroom up where we've been in. So we've got 82 degrees on the screen there. So I'm gonna uh, turn the boiler off, isolate it, and I'm gonna show you how to test that thermistor. So we're gonna carry out safe isolation. We've gone through all that in the past. So we'll probably cut at some point, just so you're not see me doing all that again so here we go we've done the isolation now so we we can remember we've got 82 degrees in there so that's quite a high temperature so we'll be looking at a low resistance reading now one of the things when we're testing on on live boilers if we're testing components now this one all i need to do just drop the front one screw two little catches and I'm into the wiring where all the components are. The right hand side tends to be the low wiring, uh, low voltage, should I say, and um, the left hand side is high, high voltage. So I've looked on the set of instructions and it's basically telling me my flow thermistor, which is number 13 there, it's on two red wires and I trace it round and it comes onto this long block here and it's coming in on uh, terminals six and seven. Now, if I was to do a direct connection onto six and seven, I'm probably going to pick a reading up, but what might happen is I may pick up a back feed off the circuit board. So I'm picking up not only the Mr. Reading, but the circuit board. So I'll just connect onto those two with it still on there. And on this particular Worcester board, there are some little indents where you can get the probes of your multimeter in, so you can get them into there. So I'm just going to go on to the two little connections there. And what I can see, I'm getting 1.458K, so 1,400K, which isn't too far off what I'd be expecting on the chart. Um, because I've looked on the chart and it's not too far away. So I might think that's a good reading, but just a make sure I get the perfect reading. I've just disconnected it, and this is where you've got to be careful with your probes, that you're making sure that you don't push them in too far and start damaging things. So I'm just going in there, and I'm just going across those two connections, and I just need to get in a little bit better with, 
with that one just to make sure we're actually on that terminal so i'm in there now and i'm getting 1.69 so just shy of 1.7 thousand ohms so you can see there's a difference on there so it, it could make make a bit of a difference if we're reading so when you're testing components electrically testing the main things are isolate your boiler safe isolation tb118 is what you need to refer to but when you're testing something always remove it from the circuit board and either test at the wiring going up to the components or as you've seen what i tend to use um, in, in a little test pieces because it's easier sometimes to get them in there and plug them in and you're not damaging the little connections on the uh, on the connector that goes onto your PCB because you don't want to start damaging wiring harnesses. You've got to be fairly gentle when you're putting your probes in, not, not jamming them in there and damaging things. So that's been a little bit about testing thermistors. I've been in the naughty corner, which uh, oh, it's a long time since I was, but I'll hold my hand up. I do make mistakes, so I do apologise. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please comment down below. Um, Put a like on there, that's great. Give us some feedback. Again, good, bad or indifferent. We're quite happy. If we've made any mistakes, let us know about it. We really appreciate you uh, coming back to us. So hopefully that's been of use to you, for you guys out there understanding what the misters do, why we have them. It's quite an important little piece. We think about the circuit board being quite expensive, but the circuit board is only the brain. And your brain can't function without your senses. If I can't see what I'm doing, I'm hopeless. And that's what the thermistor's doing. It's giving that brain, that circuit board, some information which is determining how hot it is, how cold it is, so whether it comes on or goes off. So that's just a little bit about thermistor. So thanks very much uh, from me, Roy Fugler, over at Viva. Until next time, bye-bye. Thank you once again to Roy and thank you to Viva Training Academy for all the help and support. If you've got any questions, please put them in the comments below. Always remember, if you're gonna work on a gas boiler, you must be gas safe registered, and you must do all your safety checks. TB118 is very important if you're gonna do any testing in boilers. So please check out the video that we did. We, I did a video with Socket and C, and we did a video on, on TB118. So if you search for TB118, and you'll find that video on safe isolation and, and working on boilers. Um, yeah, if you've got any questions, as I say, please put them in comments below. And thanks once again to everybody who watches and supports the channel. Um, yeah, thank you.